can't look back. All you have is what's in front of you. Even the moment now, gone, at a snap. And while I'd like to re-engage with so many wonderful memories, or go back and change the course of time with less pleasant ones, like falling up the stairs on a Saturday night with a drink in one hand, don't ask, I shouldn't have been doing more than one thing at a time. Focusing on that I must live, now, before I die. Setting my sights on the day ahead. Isn't that what you taught me? The past only matters as much as it informs the future. Not discounting its importance, but just minimizing the paralyzing effects of regret, rationalization, and righteousness. Of course, there's the um, temptation to go back to an innocuous day. Driving with my mother to New York City in her new Maroon 505 Pujo four-door, going much too fast, I realized in retrospect. Uh, counting the cars as we pass them. 10, 20, 30, 36. What's the rush? She'll be dead before the age of 49. But I'll think about her every day. Every single day, without pause, without being conscious of it, because she was, is, is a lovely woman who taught me to live life upside down. To do the essential things first, like to, to live out my Jack LaLanne fantasy, my childhood hero, the exercise guru, whose TV show I used to watch when I was sick at home from school. My mother smothering my throat with Vicks vapor rub, or wrapping a white handkerchief around my neck and calling me cowboy um, as I rushed to please her by charging ahead, sometimes doing two things at once uh, in case one reached a standstill. Even at the expect expense of excellence um, and well past the point it would have been wise to stop. So even though you are small and gray, and even though you've given me the chance to re-experience one day in my past, reincarnated as the narrator in our town, and even though my one encounter with you forever changed my life and it had no effect on yours, may you rest in peace, dear one. Let me say that I'm not above embracing the past because I embrace it every day I am a collector of past moments, always reminiscing. Driving with my mom, running a six minute mile, my first date with my wife at Joburn's restaurant in 1984. We spent three hours drawing on the table clock with crayons, subconsciously mapping out a future with images of homes, children, sunshine. If I had the chance, I would go back to that moment. Not necessarily to eavesdrop on the conversation, but to ask to take that tablecloth home, a roadmap to our future. <clears throat> a moment of pure joy, followed by a series of questions. Why, Dad? Why did you ask me to stop asking so many questions? Or, why did I get fixated on that moment in 1983 where I wrote this play called Double Fault, and everything came together for one night perfectly. And I promised myself that I would forever chase that feeling of everything coming together in a darkened room. And all these moments building towards the most meaningful one, the one we call now. But most importantly, I'd ask my mom, how are you? And she would say, how are you? without once looking back in the rearview 